With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. Homecoming done right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. You know this guy by now? He's Tennessee Tech head coach Marcus Satterfield. I'm your host, Dylan Vazano, and the Golden Eagles, they soared on homecoming, a thrilling 21-20 victory against Southeast Missouri. Coach, that was a fun game to call, fun game to watch. How about coaching it? It was good. I mean, we tried to follow the process like we tell the players. I mean, we weren't really worried about the score. If we were scoring, not scoring, we were just coaching as hard as we could every play, not looking at the scoreboard. Our players uh, reflected that that same energy that our coaching staff had. And we, unlike past weeks, found a way to to make plays at the end when we had to, to, to win a game against a really good opponent. And defensively, I mean, in that second half, that was really impressive. Yeah, the defense has, has gotten better each week. And, uh, you know, we're leaning on them a lot because we're – not the most explosive offense at this point. So for them to come out and stop them a couple times on third down, on fourth down, and then in the red zone, I mean, Simo was one for four touchdowns in the red zone with one field goal and two missed field goals, and that was the difference in the game. Ready to uh, take a look at the film? I am, yes. All right, let's do it. Let's roll it. Introducing the game highlights, and that is brought to you by Wendy's of Cookville. Tennessee Tech against Southeast Missouri, a pivotal Ohio Valley Conference battle. Of course, Coach, it's homecoming. You had a lot of fanfare, festivities, pageantry. There you go, running out, touching the Golden Eagle, and a great crowd on hand. Yeah, it was a great crowd. You know, we got to get even bigger and bigger as we go. Hopefully some people that don't usually come to our games had a good time, saw the product, and will come back and visit us soon. You see the coin toss, and Tennessee Tech does win the coin toss. They elect to defer, so they give Southeast Missouri the football first. The Red Hawks come out, and after a fourth down conversion on the drive, they start to put something together. Here on a second down and 12 from the SEMO 44-yard line, it's Jesse Hoskett. He completes it 44 yards to Christian Wilkinson. So that gets the Red Hawks into the red zone, down to the 12-yard line, and they are able to punch it in. Three plays later, Will Young goes right up the gut, touchdown, and Coach SEMO strikes first. Yeah, we got him to second and 11, got him to third and 11, let him get one to fourth and one and fourth and two. They went for it, extended the drive, ended up in a touchdown. We got to get better at defending second and long. Ryan McCrum, the extra point. There he nails a 51-yard field goal, his ninth career 50-yard field goal or more. So that makes it 10-0. How do the Golden Eagles respond? Well, pretty well. There's Michael Birdsong. What a catch by Chris Cates, coach, on a second and six. Yeah, I wish we had some good slow-mo on this one because it was unbelievable. We cupped the ball and then pinned it on his thigh and came down with it without hitting the ground. Later on the drive, could have been the play of the drive. Birdsong is sacked right here on a third and seven from the SEMO 32, but a Fernando Wigham penalty on the face mats. Gives 15 yards down to the SEMO 17-yard line. And Coach, Golden Eagles capitalize. You'll see a first and goal from the two-yard line. D.D. Thainrat, his fourth rushing touchdown yeah, of the season. That play was very well blocked. It was a clean run in. Any, you know, there, there was a hole big enough, as you could say, the proverbial truck, drive a truck through. And then the play before that, Mike did a great job, again, extending the play, get it down to the one-yard line. 12 play, 75-yard drive. There's the extra point. Took seven and a half minutes off the clock. Very next play from scrimmage. Hoskett had one interception over 200 passes coming in. I repeat, one. Well, there's number two. Elliot Norman, the junior linebacker, picks it off. And, Coach, he is gone for the touchdown. Yeah, that was that was really neat to see. He made the same exact play in camp against Michael in the offense. And just to be able to catch the ball and come down without falling down, he had to torque his body. And, uh, and then have the urgency to score and got escorted in by his teammates. So that was something that really catapulted us into this game. Golden Eagles, 14 points in 17 seconds. We fast forward to inside eight minutes of the first half. There goes Will Young on a third down and one. And then two plays later, it's Jesse Hoskett. Again goes Wilkerson. This time his longest pass, it's 47 yards and a touchdown. Simo reclaims a 17-14 advantage. Golden Eagles, though, would come right back. Second play of the drive. Patience here by Michael Birdsong. He's rolling. He's throwing. He finds Dante's Bird, one of his game-high eight catches in the contest. Very next play, it's Birdsong. Coach, a bullet pass right to Austin Hicks for 27 yards. Yeah, it was a big-time throw. Got out of his hand. A little rocker step from the from the shotgun alignment by the quarterback and put a, you know, a very accurate ball there on Austin. That was a great play by Austin to be able to run after the catch as well. Three plays later, third and four from the SEMO 34-yard line. We saw Kate's the other great catch. That's a perfect throw and another good catch. Yeah, that had a, that was a great scheme right there. Used some motion to get a coverage indicator. Mike saw man coverage, went to Kate's with the one-on-one, threw it right over the defender's head, and that's a hard ball to defend. This play right here is ridiculous. Uh, 
if you could see it from the back view of where he put this ball and I threw it, that is a NFL throw. It's, that's big time. And this guy's out there competing. That was a first and goal from the 10-yard line. It's the very next play after the Chris Case catch. It is bird song to bird. Absolutely perfect throw. The tight window that he fits it in. Extra point is up. It is good. So Tennessee Tech reclaims the lead. They're up 21-17. This is the middle of a nine-play drive. Very next one for Southeast Missouri. There goes Will Young. His longest rush, 22 yards. He would get 102 in the game. But here on a fourth and nine, the field goal is up. Coach, it is no good. And you call the timeout right before them. A little icing right there. My dad was asking me that. He's like, that was big time. So I was like, I'll be honest with you. That We had timeouts. I've always seen that on TV, and I always wanted to do it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what happens here. And I was afraid right when I called timeout he was going to miss it. And then everybody would be like, you idiot. Why did you do that? But it worked out well. I, I'd like to think I had strategy you know, with that, but I really didn't. I was just playing ball coach. Didn't want to take any timeouts into the halftime with us. Well, on the missed field goal, you guys are now 21-17 at the mm -hmm. half. So what's it like in the locker room? It's pretty simple. I mean, guys keep playing as hard as you can. If they don't score, you win the game. So all you have to do is just go out and execute. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to play any better. Just don't let them score and you win the game. Well, Tennessee Tech leading by four. Let's show you how the rest of this football game went. The third quarter with the Golden Eagles on top, 21 to 17. It's the first Southeast Missouri drive after Tech was forced to punt. There goes Cameron Sanders on the little pitch for 12 yards, his longest rush. This was a 15-play drive by Southeast Missouri. 12 of them were runs. This is not one of them. The pass, it is deflected at the line of scrimmage by Tim Collins. He makes a play on a third and seven, so Simo forced to kick a field goal. This time, McCrum makes it, and now it's 21-20, but coach, red zone defense. Yeah, we, you know, this is, uh, again, you know, we, we've really gotten better at red zone defense. We've we emphasize scoring touchdowns in the red zone, not giving up touchdowns in the red zone for our guys to hold up like they did. One of four for the day is the difference in us winning and losing. Next Red Hawks drive as we close out the third quarter. That was the first play of their drive inside three minutes. It's Hoskett to Tyler McLemore for 23 yards. This first play of the first quarter is His a fourth and one. His knee was down, one. though. His knee hit the ground. They didn't call it. So that was we got a little gypped on that one. A little disgruntled, but the two-yard yeah. rush gets the first down. But then your defense comes up big time. Third down. That's no good on there, and then the missed field goal once again. That's huge. Again, one for four. Our defense, you know, we don't have to let them get down on the red zone to play great defense, but once teams are getting in the red zone, our guys really stiffen up, and they will not let them in the, you know, cross the goal line. Simo, a few possessions later, that's inside seven minutes. A big sack by Joe Robertson. Two plays later, third and ten from the Tech 41. That one goes incomplete. And so now, Coach, the Red Hawks are forced to punt. They send Alex Knight out there. It's a good punt. Get some members bouncing down to the one-yard line. Yeah, this is a great punt. And, you know, as soon as it hit on the, about the 18 and rolled to the one, I was thinking, what in the heck? But our guys went out there and uh, made plays. This is Mike making the play, extending the play getting the ball to Dantez. I mean, that was a third and four. Uh, we get it here in a minute to another third and four and have to convert. And for an offense that's really struggling right now to execute and block and, and be very explosive at all, to, you know, to get two first downs and then take a knee here to end the game and convert two crucial third and fours from your minus one, uh, that, was, that was big time. That was competitive greatness like we talk about. That's Michael Birdsong's toughness. Edie Thainwright's toughness coming through to our entire offense, making the plays when they had to. I was really proud of our guys for that. Yeah, from the shadow of the own end zone, you heard coach, two third down conversions at critical times. Dante's bird, then Yeedy Thane right, 18 yards, ices it. There you see the final numbers. Birdsong, 14 out of 23, 170 yards and a touchdown. Thane right, 10 carries, 51 yards and a score. And then a season high, eight catches, 97 yards for Dante's bird with a touchdown as well. So, Coach, I mean, we, we spoke of it earlier. A hard fought 21 20 victory. The defense really stepped up in that second half. Yeah, I mean, plan to win, you know, trust the process, everything. We don't change, and there's a lot of comfort for our kids, you know. There's no gimmicks in our in our program. It's the same every week, and we just have to get better at our process. And you look at it like people would look and say, well, your total yards are down, and you gave up these plays. We don't care about those. We care about certain things in a game. We care about touchdowns in the red zone, our defense one for four, our offense two for two. We care about turnovers, win the turnover margin. We didn't have any. They had one for a touchdown. We didn't beat ourselves. We had one penalty. They had six. So we handled our process, and we won the game. Well, Tennessee Tech gets their third victory of the season in OVC action. It was a full day of action across the Ohio Valley Conference. All nine schools were on the gridiron. So let's take a look 
at the OVC scoreboard and standings. That's brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. It was a shootout in Charleston, but Murray State wins it 40-38. to They had six turnovers in the game. Also, Connor Mitchell kicked six field goals. Racers win. Number two, Jacksonville State, three defensive touchdowns. Gives them a 24-7 to victory. UT Martin, their record evens up to 4-4 four and four with their third loss to an FBS opponent. They go down 31-6 to Georgia State. And another shootout over in Clarksville. Austin P comes up short against Mercer. Govs did, though, have 500 total yards of offense for the first time since 2006. Jared Beard with a career high 181 receiving yards. Final game on the Ohio Valley Conference slate. There you see number 25, Tennessee State, going down 35-17 to Vanderbilt. TSU did lead 14-7 in the first quarter, but they lose the contest to go to 5-5 and two on the season. Now, as we're going to take a look at the OVC standings, Jacksonville State still atop with a 3-0 record. UT Martin 3-1 and in second, then Tennessee State at 2-1, and Eastern Illinois 3-2. and There's Tennessee Tech at 3-3, three and SEMO 2-2, two and two, EKU 2-2, two and two, Murray State 1-3, and three, and then Austin P with an 0-5 record. Coach, seems like a jam packed throughout the middle of the OVC. And it all comes back to last week. I keep looking at that Eastern Illinois name, and it just drives me absolutely nuts. But... Yeah, it's jam-packed. There's equality everywhere. We've got to finish out the season, see what we can do. Well, glad we were able to get the graphic off, and then it's, it's back on to us. So that's over and done with. What also is over and done with right now, because we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, though, we're going to introduce a Golden Eagle player. We'll take a look at a mic'd up segment as well. So stay with us right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. <laughs> Wherever, whenever, cheering for whoever. There's one place to go for free OBC sports. The OBC Digital Network. Back here on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Well, we told you all about the Golden Eagles and their 21-20 victory against Southeast Missouri. Very defensively led in that second half. One of those players, sophomore linebacker Josh Poplar, had a game-high 16 tackles. He currently, currently leads the Golden Eagles with 84 tackles on the season. So let's hear more about the Tech sophomore introducing the player profile. That's brought to you by TTSports.com. Uh, my name is Joshua Poplar. Uh, I am a redshirt sophomore, and I play linebacker. Uh, I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, my family has helped me uh, tremendously in my life, uh, shaping the man of who I am today. Um, they've always supported me from youth, and uh, they've always had my back throughout everything. I started playing football at a young age, uh, at eight to be exact. Um, I just would play with my brother all the time in the backyard, and uh, finally I asked my father if I could play organized football, and he got me strapped up and ready to go. My father, uh, he played a lot of sports. He played football, basketball. Uh, ran track. Uh, and he was pretty successful in all those sports. He was an All-American in basketball, uh, but the best sport he was at is track. Uh, he competed in the Deaf Olympics in 1969 and 1973 and uh, won silver in both of those events for shot put. My parents being deaf, a lot of people may overlook that and don't think much about it, but um, I had to grow up at a young age. Uh, my parents depended on me for communication, whether it be going out and to the grocery store uh, handling with business sort of things, with bills and things of that nature, and I would have to communicate for them. So uh, I had to learn how to interact with people and read the body language and things of that nature. So um, I really had to be there, and they used me as a backbone and also used my parents as a backbone. I would definitely, uh, the most influential person in my life would definitely have to be my father. Um, he's always taught me how to be humble in every situation, uh, whether it be in sports or just dealing with people or in just life in general. Uh, he's always taught me to uh, take care of others and put others before yourself and things of that nature. My parents can come to all my games and even away games too because they're relatively close. So having them as a support system really helps and, uh, for my mentality, my, my mindset heading into the game. I tore my ACL my junior year um, in, with, in high school. And in high school, that's a pretty big year to you know shine and do your thing. Uh, and I didn't really have the opportunity to go out there and compete. 
and my brother, so that really set me back as far as the mindset. So uh, it was definitely tough overcoming that, but uh, everything worked out for the better, so I'm thankful for it. One of my, my high school coaches, uh, sons played here, uh, Darian Stone. Uh, his father was my coach in high school, and he really pushed me to come here. Uh, obviously, I walked on here um, thinking I had an opportunity to compete and earn a scholarship and be able to play here and help Tennessee Tech win a championship. Uh, playing football here has helped me academically by uh, holding me accountable in uh, time management. Knowing I have to be at certain places or study at a certain time has really helped me in my academic, uh, my academics because um, I need to be crisp and I can't be behind on certain dates and my grade will reflect if I'm behind on a certain day or things of that nature. So, personal goal I've set for myself is to lead the team in tackles and also be all conference this year. Um, I've worked really hard and I've really just set that mindset to be up there with the top. Our team and I love my teammates. Uh, I can't really describe the feeling because there's, there's so much energy within this program than before. Uh, we love each other. We go out there and practice and every day and grind it out. And it doesn't even feel like we're grinding it out because we're having fun out there competing every day. So uh, we're locked in, we're focused, and we have a mission and we're set to achieve it. So we believe in the process and Coach Satterfield and all the coaching and staff and the things that they have us doing. So we're locked in and ready to go. I look up to Elliot Norman. Uh, he's a fellow linebacker of mine. Uh, he was in a similar position I was in uh, walking on here. Uh, a lot of people didn't have faith in us starting out and uh, we started from the bottom and just the way he kind of took me under his wing and I just embodied his work ethic and just learned how to watch film and get better in practice so he really took me under his wing and showed me the ropes so I'm thankful for him and just him being there because I think my mindset my mentality would be totally different if he wasn't here at this program. I like to be precise in everything I do and know what I'm doing on the field and things of that nature and sometimes I can psych myself out by thinking of too many scenarios and uh, Coach Quinn he told me that you know I just need to go out there and play, fo play football and have fun and everything else will take care of itself and if I just fly around and have fun that you know everything will be all right. Wow coach uh, a great story and obviously just a great season he's having. Unbelievable. I, you know, I was one of the guys that you know I didn't know. I, I knew I liked the kid a lot, but sometimes you get into that trap of liking a kid and maybe he's not as good a player as much as you like him, but he has lived up to all of our expectations and beyond. I mean, he's a single digit. You know, the guys, he was one of the first guys that was voted as a, you know, the, the nine toughest guys on our team. And you can always tell a leader when they do interviews because he never talks about himself. He talks about Elliot Norman. He talks about his parents. He talks about all the different people that influenced his life. That, that's a leader. Uh, you know, we talk about practicing better than anybody in the country. He's the reason we can. Like, talk about loving each other. He's the reason that the that, that team is coming together like it is. So, I, you know, I'm so glad we got a couple more years with him. I think he's going to continue to be better and better and better. And, you know, his future is so bright. Even if he never plays a down of football in the NFL, he is going to be an elite leader in some form or fashion in any business that he wants to go into. So, People want to hire student athletes in you know, leadership positions to enhance their business. He would be the first one I would look at. Great, great, great young man. Such a talented young man in Tennessee Tech. Such talented practices that they've been having recently with some of the Golden Eagle success. As always, we take a look inside those Tennessee Tech practices. So let's introduce Mike Up right now. And that is brought to you by Pepsi. Get set! High level! Stay square! Stay square! Fight the ball! Ready to go! 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 Hey, push that, push that side so we square up. Push that side so we square up. Fly off the ball and roll your hips. Get both feet in the ground. Come on. Ready to go? Drive, 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 drive! Bag holders, you have to give resistance. You have to make it realistic. Let's go. Waste some time. Here we go. Area step right, area step right, drive them off the board. Here we go. Ready to go. How's it back? How's it back? How's it back? Joe, don't turn, don't turn. Accelerate all the way down that board. Accelerate, accelerate. Get to my landmark. Get to my play side number, drive them off the board. On express. Ready to go. John, 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 John. Shooter, great job. That way to come off the ball. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Offset with two yard cushion. 
on the, on, on the express count, the bag starts shuffling, right? You gotta run, get my hand, my backside hand to the sternum, and run for that leverage. I'm not crossing over with my feet. I have to keep a good base. I gotta accelerate, all right? So I'm right here, screw up a little bit, all right? As I'm going, I gotta accelerate through that bag the whole time, all right? It's not, I'm not trying just to scoop it and position block it. You gotta accelerate all the way through. All right, here we go. One more time, one more time. I wanna get this right, I wanna get this right. Here we go. Single, 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 here we go. Ready, boop. Better, 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 better. All right, left side, left side. Coach, uh, another shocker, another <laughs> assistant coach, fiery, passionate, intense. Yeah, I mean, as you can tell, Cam was a really, really, really good player. Remington Watch Award winner, like three years of the four, three-year starter. Had Russell Wilson as a quarterback, Glennon as quarterback at NC State. So uh, he is a very young, uh, really good, young, up-and-coming O-line coach. And he's working tackles, tight ends, working you know a lot more of their offensive line here lately. And he's doing a great job, as you can tell. I mean, he's got uh, the demeanor and the, the, uh, the energy, like you said. To, to be a great O-line coach, and as, it was, I can make fun of him now, he was starting to wear down towards the end. <laughs> he was practicing harder than the players were. So, you know, just like you said, like the makeup of our entire staff, there's probably six guys on our staff right now that can go be head coaches, and, and he definitely falls into that lineage. Well, we're going to take a break right now on the Marcus Satterfield Show, but there's still lots to get to in what was a very busy homecoming weekend. So stay with us right here on the Marcus Satterfield Show. What are you looking for? A place to belong? A path to a career? A way to make things better? Do you wonder what opportunity looks like? Explore your answers here. Change your world at Tennessee Tech University. Visit tntech.edu slash change. Hello again on the Marcus Satterfield Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Well, of course, Tennessee Tech football team with a 21-20 victory over Southeast Missouri. That was one of many events on the campus of TTU. And to tell you more about some of those events, here's Golden Eagle Athletic Director Mark Wilson with this week's Golden Eagle Update. That's brought to you by the Tech Athletics Twitter at TTU Golden Eagles. It was an excellent homecoming Hall of Fame weekend on the Tennessee Tech campus. Great Golden Eagle victory as Coach Satterfield and Dylan have already talked about. But I want to start off by giving a tip of the hat to Tennessee Tech's fraternities and sororities. As their homecoming philanthropy, they raised over $50,000 for Habitat for Humanity. That's enough for one home and they will help build that home during these spring semesters. So great job, men and women. Of course, we have to talk about the Red Hot Golden Eagle soccer team. They have won four straight games. Last Friday, the Golden Eagles beat SIUE by a score of one to nothing. Nora Visick had the lone goal. It was her third game with a third straight game with a goal and her third straight game winning goal. Kyrie Nutterman had eight saves in that contest for Tennessee Tech to preserve the big, big victory over SIUE. On senior day, it was very fitting that two seniors, Kaitlin Pruitt and Abby Gearing, each found the back of the net to lead the soccer team to a two to zero victory over Eastern Illinois. Tech is now in sole possession of third place in the Ohio Valley Conference standings with a 6-1-2 OVC record, 10-5-3 overall. The Golden Eagles will play in Richmond, Kentucky against Eastern Kentucky on Thursday. If the Golden Eagles win that contest, they'll be the number two seed in the Ohio Valley Conference championships. If Murray State loses on Thursday and the Golden Eagles win, the Golden Eagles will win a share of the OVC regular season crown. The Golden Eagle volleyball team lost to SIUE 0-3 on Friday. On Saturday, they beat EIU by a score of 3-2, winning the fifth and deciding set by a score of 18-16. Shailene Little had 16 kills. Alyssa Povey, five blocks. Kennedy Wade, 30 digs. And Sharon Anderson, 46 assists in that contest. The women's golf team completed the fall season, finishing sixth at the Memphis Intercollegiate. Sophomore Holly Sadler led the way, tying for 12th. Men's golf improved each and every day at the FNM Bank Intercollegiate hosted by uh, Austin P. Junior Alexander Riddle led the way for the Tennessee Tech shooting a 225. Eduardo Mania won two matches at the ITA Ohio Valley Regional at Tennessee this past weekend. 
men's and women's cross country team. They're in action this Saturday at the Ohio Valley Conference Championship. So best of luck to them as they look to win OVC crowns. And last week, the Ohio Valley Conference announced the OVC Scholar Athletes Awards and Tennessee Tech had two of the six awards. Tip of the hat, congratulations to Abby Gehring and Alberto Esteban. That is the highest honor that the OVC can bestow upon form, uh, uh, student athletes. This week's Regions Bank Athletes of the Weeks are Abby Gearing and Elliot Norman and Josh Poplar. Great job. Gabby Perez was named September's Unsung Leader Award. This Thursday is Purple Palooza. Join us. Trick-or-treating begins at 6. All the basketball activities at 7. Basketball season tickets are on sale now, 931-372-3940. And, of course, it was announced earlier today, the Tennessee Tech at UT game time is at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central. Tennessee Tech ticket office still has a few tickets available. So if you want to see Tennessee Tech and head coach uh, Marcus Satterfield take on the volunteers, just call them. Again, 931-372-3940. Back down to Coach Satterfield and Dylan. Uh, thanks, Mark, up there, as always, giving us uh, everything that we need to know about Tennessee Tech athletics. All right, Coach, well, usually this is the part of the show where we talk about this week's opponent, but you guys are on a bye. Next game will be two weeks against the University of Tennessee on November 5th. So heading into a bye week and kind of what is the focus and what do you guys look to do? Uh, we've got to get you know healthy. We've got a lot of guys banged up, and if this bye week would have happened week four, week five, we'd practice three times this week. But... The guys that are playing, uh, you know, they're not going to practice any this week. They're going to just get get healthy, uh, get re-energized mentally and physically. I mean, it's an emotional toll to go 12 straight weeks, you know, counting camp, especially like you say with our staff. We're an emotional group, <laughs> and uh, so we push them and push them and push them. So they're just going to they're going to watch film, hang out with us, watch the young guys practice. This would be a great week for the young guys to show us what they can do. You know, kind of towards the latter part of the season, get some scrimmage work, and then. We'll come back on Sunday night and get ready for the volunteers. Get yeah, ready for the volunteers. And like we said, that game November 5th. And we'll preview it a lot more on next week's show. I do have another question for you. Your Cubs are in the World Series. What are you thinking, Cubs, Indians? Well, I would like to be like a normal Cub fan and say I've been waiting my whole <laughs> life for this, but I've really just been waiting for about eight days. That's how long okay, I've been a Cubs fan. Days. But am I a loyal Cubs fan? I am. I'm a very loyal Cubs fan. I don't have a Cubs hat yet, but I need to get one. I can't wait to see the series. That's a good freaking – Indians versus Cubs. Like, if that doesn't say old school, I don't know what does. Uh, you got to love that intensity and passion talking about baseball. Well, Coach, same time, same place next week? No doubt. All right, we will be here next week. That's going to do it for the Marcus Satterfield Show, and we'll see you next week. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.